Hello everyone. Uh, today I just want to uh, talk to you a little bit about that uh, boring bar that we're making for Keith Rucker. Uh, you've seen a few previous videos. Uh, and those videos are really uh, showing my journey on, on this. This is my first time through and I've made a lot of mistakes so just don't use those as a tutorial. And uh, so anyways, uh, uh, Robin Renzini uh, told me to give him a call and uh, he had some ideas and we talked uh, for a little bit on the phone there, actually a pretty good while. And uh, he had some really good ideas and uh, he's been down this road a little bit more and uh, with other things that are similar. And uh, so he pointed out a lot of things uh, uh, that uh, would be issues. And, and so now this uh, has come into a three-part collaboration with Keith Rucker, myself, and Robin. And so Robin actually drew up in SolidWorks. He drew up uh, uh, this design. And uh, uh, we'll show you this and uh, uh, talk about it a little bit more here. But basically, what I'm going to do, we're going to scrap the design that we did before. I'll be cutting this off, and I'll be grinding this 15 degree angle. And this is going to be a head, and obviously this is uh, all, uh, bigger than uh, scale, but we'll be silver soldering this on the end. I'm going to have to grind, I think, about 300 thousandths more off the back on the relief there. But anyways, we're, we're going to use this head, and we're going to use a tool that goes in here uh, is going to be a 3 16 uh, carbide and we'll just grind uh, the proper angles the proper reliefs and uh, uh, Robin was so good he, he sketched all this up and uh, I've never met Robin personally I've talked to him numerous times on the phone and it's always an education uh, every time I get to talk to him and actually it's not just an education it's one of the finest educations I think you can get uh, I wish we were neighbors. I'd be uh, learning from him and his vast experience as often as I could. And uh, But anyways, uh, just a big thanks for Robin for jumping in. Uh, I thought uh, uh, we chased Uncle Murphy and Bozo off, but I found him hiding behind the steel rack snickering. And so now Robin Renzini, he can come in and with his help, we'll, I think we'll run him off for good. But anyhow, Robin pointed out a number of reasons why this will probably be a better design and uh, and they all made sense and and if you ever worked with Robin or talked with him or, or seen some of his projects that he has done uh, he thinks these things out uh, very well uh, he doesn't leave any stone unturned and uh, the man uh, with his vast knowledge he's a very humble man a very helpful man and uh, you don't find individuals like that around uh, very often. So I'm just glad that uh, even though I haven't met him yet, I can consider him a friend. And, and we uh, uh, work together on a few things here already. And he's been a big help for me on a lot of stuff. But anyhow, his reasoning, which makes a lot of sense, by going to this design, he says the bar can be used with other insert and inserts and pitches. So the original way that I was going to go with this bar... I was just going to alter this uh, insert that's set uh, for a four thread per inch. And, of course, I was going to, if you watch other two videos, I was running into a lot of problems there. So, anyways, uh, with this, you can grind up whatever shape tool that you want to go in there uh, for other pitches, uh, different shapes. Uh, he says uh, this bar can even be used to slot internal splines in the lathe. So it's a multi-function tool. So it's not just going to be for Acme threads. You can actually use it for uh, many other things. Uh, the inserts are simple and quick to grind since there's minimal material removal and they are symmetrical. And he says it works for the right or the left hand with the same insert just by setting the tool top to the helix angle in the correct direction. He says, uh, since the lateral position is repeatable, you can replace the insert if you break one and carry on just like a, a regular insert tooling. And he says, this allows you to use a roughing insert and then switching to a finisher. And uh, so he said he has some 316 ultra uh, micrograin uh, carbide blanks and some uh, 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 screws there if I needed them. And so... Uh, he was going to go with a five uh, 
millimeter screw and uh, I asked him if a 1032 would work and so he, he said it would be fine and he redo, redrew this for me. So he is going to send me some of the ultra micro grain or grain, uh, yeah, was it ultra, yeah, micro grain uh, carbide uh, 316 pins that I can grind the tools out of. And also he sent me an email and uh, he's got some uh, material that he's going to be doing uh, some of these heads. He said he'd be building some for himself. So he's going to send some of these heads. I think that there'll be uh, quite a bit of work done in them uh, when I get them. And then he's going to send me uh, a different type of uh, silver solder. And again, I'm just calling that knowing it's the controversy, but that's what I've always called it. Uh, whether it's hard solder, uh, uh, silver bronze, whatever they call it. I'm, I'm just going to call it what I always did, silver solder. But uh, he's going to send that. He says it uh, has a, a lower melting temperature, and uh, and, and so we'll, we'll be using that as well. He's going to send the proper flux along with it as, as well. So anyhow, this is uh, uh, the tip design. Uh, we have the insert design. And what was nice, Robin has a copy of SolidWorks, and I use that at work. So I, I know uh, how good it is, and uh, I'll probably have to turn these a little bit. Is that working for you? Okay. Uh, but here's a cut-in-half view uh, of, of that. Uh, here's the shape. He was showing how that he actually modeled this up, uh, again, in SolidWorks, and got all the angles that he needed. And it was really nice that he sent all this uh, uh, because uh, by modeling it like that, you can see where all the reliefs have to be, uh, everything on there. And it always bugged me because I know when you're working on them compound angles, things will change slightly on you and you got to be very careful. And by modeling it, you can, you can capture all that. So these are just some of the sheets that uh, he sent of his modeling. And we'll just go through those. And then you can always pause if you need to and read uh, the description. Again, I'm showing this just to show you how helpful he's been. Uh, there's no stone unturned. He, he did a great job, an awesome job on this. And, uh, you know, it, it works good because, uh, you know, for me being my first time down this path. Whoops, excuse me, just bumped the camera. Being down this path, there's a lot of things that if you try to get a picture of this in your head without a model it's near impossible at least for my mind uh, maybe there's some people out there that uh, are better at it than me but uh, so he's just showing the different clearance on both sides that's going to have to be cut into that and then he's got the tool and uh, he's got this even drawn with the proper relief angles uh, that you need uh, on the heel side and uh, you know, so er everything's done. I, I just got to build the parts now. I got working blueprints, and and uh, it's gonna save me a lot of work, and uh, hopefully it's gonna be uh, take care of a, a lot of mistakes. But this is what the finished product. There'll be a 1032 uh, screw in mine on here, and and that will pinch, and then you can like you can set that at whatever degree angle you need, grind up the tool bit. Uh, whatever shape you need for whatever pitch and uh, so uh, to take a compl uh, complicated job and it will make it much easier here be an in view and I think there's one more page and here you get the screw in the top so uh, you can you can see as well one of the things that he has done which I thought was very neat was he's cutting uh, this shape right here, I forget what the diameter, I think it was uh, 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 300 radius if I remember right, and it's off center. And so what that does, it maintains a lot of the strength in this head because you're a thicker section here, but you can still fit within a 5 8 diameter hole that we will need. And so uh, a very clever design. And again, here's what the head will look like, and then uh, you would have this shaft right here in the end uh, that will be silver soldered on that. So anyway, this is the direction that we're planning on going now. And uh, hopefully we can get this done soon. Uh, 
we're on the holiday breaks from work right now and I'm off until the 7th uh, there's gonna be some people working there they got a plant shut down for uh, those all the holidays but there'll be some people in, in, the, in the shop I got my 10 inch sign plate it's I brought it to work I had to use it I, I'm gonna have to stop in there uh, either tomorrow or, or uh, the next day and see if I can get that because I'm gonna need that uh, 10 inch sign plate that I have in order to hold my spin fixture in uh, in order to grind the angle on that and uh, I also have to wait uh, Robin is gonna send me uh, a bunch of stuff and again he is now uh, in with this collaboration as well and actually uh, he's he's done a fantastic job here and I'm not sure if he's gonna make some videos on this or not it'd be nice if, uh, if he uh, uh, does some videos on on his build and everything what he's done that would be kind of a neat thing to see what he's done there too and uh, so anyways I, I gotta wait for him to mail me some parts and I gotta wait until I can get uh, my 10 inch sign plate before we can go on to the build of this boring bar but uh, what we'll do in the meantime <coughs> is uh, I got uh, I have a, a couple more of these cubes uh, I got three of these that I get I have to grind and one of the things I was going to show you to finish out our series on these was showing you another method of grinding these and getting them very close now I'm going to grind this and try to maintain the accuracy I had on the first one uh, but I'm going to show you another uh, alternative method where I'm using a squaring block to grind a squaring block and I'm only going to be able to get uh, pretty much roughly as close as what my block is now my block my personal block wasn't as accurate as the one we just finished for a customer so I'll have to uh, correct that sometime in the future but what we did we bought six more blocks and then I'm gonna make one of these for solid rock and uh, I'm gonna do a couple different hole pattern uh, changes on that for our specific uses and uh, uh, that one will be uh, extremely accurate. So anyhow, we'll be uh, showing you another method on this and uh, While I'm at it. I got to show you some wheels that came in uh, If anybody's been ordering radiac wheels, you've been finding out and I guess this is true just about any any wheels I know I was talking with a, uh, a Guy from Norton and uh, he says they're having problems, too but uh, uh, the aluminum oxide grit that, uh, if I remember right, that's coming from China is uh, getting hard to get right now. And so uh, the wheels that I really love, that I'm using a lot, uh, those ones have been back ordered all the way into February. Uh, and I needed something between, uh, between then and now. And so my supplier said they had some other makeups. So they were very close to what I like. And so he sent me a couple wheels, and now this one is a <coughs> Ruby 46, and it's an F. Uh, it's an F plus, and so it's a softer wheel than what I've been using. And so I'm very curious to see how this performs. I'm hoping that it's not too soft, but I'm guessing it's going to leave a pretty nice finish. It's a porous construction as well. And uh, so here's one of the other wheels that he has sent. And uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, pretty much the same wheel, except it's in a G grit. So it's a little bit harder. And this will be really close to what I've been getting. Uh, actually, I think it might be one of the wheels that I have been getting. Uh, because I know I had some Gs. Uh, but I, I think the one that I've been using mostly was the H hardness. But So these are going to be a little bit softer than what I use. And I'm... Uh, I think uh, grinding those squaring blocks, uh, that's going to be a nice test to see how well these cut and how well they hold the size uh, and what kind of finish. So so when we uh, start grinding on some of these, uh, you guys will be seeing this just at the same time I'm seeing it. Uh, I'll be testing it on camera. One of the other projects that we're going to do is uh, we're going to make some bushings. Uh, we have these uh, half inch well half inch and three eighths boring bars that we make and sell and uh, we sell those so that you can use them uh, in a boring head this is a three inch boring head and it uh, has a three quarter inch uh, diameter here and the trouble is if you try to stick a three eighths or a half inch in well obviously 
you got a three quarter inch hole you got a uh, three inch shank well anyhow I, what I'm doing I'm in the process of making the half inch ones and this is a three eighths one that's finished it's the only one I have right now but I'll be making some more of these uh, they have flats on all four sizes sides and so what will happen when your screw pushes on here you're going to have a contact here and a contact here you got a three point contact and uh, so what you do is you take your 3 8 bar uh, you just slide that onto this bushing over here and then you just take this in your boring head line the flat up and you tighten it down and now you've got a real nice uh, bushing that holds that 3 8 boring bar very well and then you can bore your smaller holes that way and so I got the fixture set up right now and we're going to slide over there in a, uh, a little bit because I'm on my last one right now uh, of uh, the half inch bushings right here where I'm making them to this point I'll later have to take and cut the flats on them and then I'll have to uh, slot them on the ends here as well and so we'll slide on over to the milling machine and we'll show you the setup we got there okay so what we got going on here a lot of people will call this a turret mill uh, I don't know if Kathy can pan and look at uh, the tool oh, over. oh she's already in the frame uh, basically we got a tool set up here a lathe tool I can face my part off uh, I got this I can center drill I can drill a uh, pilot hole I can do the uh, a 484 drill and then I can come over here and I can take a cleanup bore then I can come over here and ream the hole and then I can come over here and part uh, the bushings and so the bushings uh, they're only this big and so I make the bar so it's big enough to do two bushings and plus have enough room for the cutoff and, uh, if, and I got most of them done this is the last one and you can see I already got this side finished and uh, I don't have it parted off yet because I need to hang on to this edge to do this side so I got to do the facing and the drilling and everything on that part so basically what I'll do is uh, I'll get this set up and I got everything based on stops so I can just go right up into the collet like so pull this out a little bit more and then I'm in there and now I'm, I'm all set to, to do all the drill work on here so basically the first process we're going to run over and we're going to and that side and we're going to come down until we hit a little bit Wind it off. I gotta come down a little bit more. And I already got this preset. I can look at my digital and I know I gotta wind into 885 thousandths and that will put me uh, about uh, 10 thousandths from center. So anyhow, <laughs> you look at the bottom. I see I got a full cut. Uh, cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use just the edge of this insert right over here and I'm just going to come down and I'm just going to put a little chamfer and take that burr off right there. And if you want to round that off a little bit more you can just take your file and round that out nice. Now I have all of these tools spaced on a one inch spacing and we don't have anything here so it's two inches from there bit everything set up so that I don't have to move in the Y all that I have to do is move in the X I'm at zero zero and all I want to do is just put a spot on there just slow the speed down come over and get to my one inch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check it it looks pretty good right there and I have my power feed set at six hours per rev and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just engage that and let it power feed I have my stop set up so I can get the correct depth and what I'll do a lot of times here because the drills do generate heat I'll just put a little air 
on there just to help keep it cool. If you try to put the oil or coolant on here because everything's upside down, it really doesn't help a lot. So I just slow the feed down. Oops, we just hit the bottom there. Yeah, I should have had my hand on that. Okay, so now we'll go over another inch, be two inches in total. I got zero off of here. We'll slow the speed down a little bit more. This one I'm going to have to wind up just a little bit here. And so now I got this set for the boring. I won't go uh, this would be one, two, three, four inch. I don't want to go four inch. This is one of our, actually, this is one of our three inch boring bars, one of the short ones. Uh, just another use for it. But anyhow, I already got it figured out and I got it wrote down, uh, you know, on, on this part of the table over here. Uh, I'm going uh, three inches, 900, and about 73. Uh, and that should leave me about five thousandths to ream. What I'm going to do, just to make sure I got my numbers right, I'm going to touch a little bit. Just to make sure, because if my number's off, I could be taking a real heavy cut, and that's not good. And I've just been running at six thousand per rev on uh, down feed. On uh, every tool, it seems to work good. And on this one, I'm going to reverse the direction just to take some of the spring cut out. Now we're going to slow it way down. We're going to come over here and we'll go right at five inches. And this, I'm going to put some of my coolant concentrated mix on there just to coat those cutting edges. And I'm going to just feed this one by hand so I can feel it. I'm going to feel the cut and get the right pressure on it. Just take it nice and slow, easy. One thing that will happen with reamers, if you run the RPMs too fast, uh, they tend to cut a little oversize. And we use the boring bar before we ream because these holes, they might not have drilled straight, but when we come over here, and use the boring bar, it will true that hole up uh, to the center line of, of the head here. And what will happen at that point is uh, uh, it will true the hole up. So when you come to the reamer, now in this case, because this reamer is quite stiff in there, it would probably cut. But if you had a real long reamer, a lot of times what the reamer will do, it will follow the hole. If the hole is crooked, it will, it will ream crooked as well. So the next stage that we have, we're going to come over here and we're going to part this off. I'm just going to turn it off right for a minute because I, I was playing with the sizes on this. And it's kind of a tight fit here. So I just want to make sure that I got this uh, set correctly. 
basically what I can do is I can yeah so that should work good right there make sure you're not touching anything turn it off and you want to slow this down uh, the parting tool does not like uh, the RPMs it's a heavy cut You can feel that when you start getting uh, close to the cutoff point. You can feel it give a little bit and then that's when you stop applying the pressure. We're getting close. Okay, we're just about there. just pop off like that and by taking a real gentle and easy on there I can just take the pliers and pull that right off and uh, one of the other things that uh, you can do is you can get this done wind it down on this way back to this end that's where you gotta start for your next one anyways and turn the RPMs up a little bit more and uh, what you can do is you can, you can break that edge And then you take one of these Noga tools and you break the edge on the inside. So we got the one piece here. And then we have another bushing there. And because there's some length in there, I'll have to take on uh, these and, and cut them down on the secondary. But anyhow, that's uh, how simple it is, just using this little fixture. Uh, I was just playing around one day and just was seeing uh, uh, what I could do with uh, making bushings for a boring bar fixture and I just, oh, let's try something like this and it actually come out pretty handy. Uh, I got to modify this uh, and do it for uh, 3 8 bushings next and so uh, what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll be making a bushing that fits in that hole that will use uh, 15 thousandths uh, under the 3 8 uh, drill bit on there. And I can probably stay uh, with the quarter inch there, or I might bushing that one out and making that with a smaller one too for pilot hole. But uh, everything was working out right where I could do the half inch holes on this. Uh, what I'll have to do at this station, that's a quarter inch hole, and I got a quarter inch boring bar, and I can pop that in there uh, so that I can do the three eighths hole, and then we'll have to throw in the three eighths uh, reamer. So we'll do that uh, sometime here in the near future. I was just discussing with Kathy the length of this video and because it is going a little longer what we're going to do is we're going to save the grinding of the block on uh, the next video. Uh, we'll probably film that tomorrow and it will be the next one. But anyways I just wanted to show you this little fixture and what we're doing here. And uh, so we're, we're done with this video today. We, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.